The Book of Everything by Thomas Clopper, age nine. Nearly 10. Address, Bruegelstraat 16, Amsterdam, Holland. Europe, Northern Hemisphere, Earth, Galaxy, Solar System, Space. Year 1951. My family. There are four people in my family. Me, Thomas Clopper, age nine, nearly 10. My father is called Papa. He is also called Mr. Abel Clopper. My mother is Yanni, Mama, and Mrs. Clopper. She is very kind to everybody. My sister is Margot. She is 16. Margot is stupid. Next door to us lives a witch. Her name is Mrs. Van Amersfoort, and she always wears black dresses. Mrs. Van Amersfoort gets teased a lot because she is a witch. Sometimes I see things that no one else can see. I write them all down in my book, the book of everything. I write down everything so that later I'll know exactly what happened. My favorite color is blue. My favorite food is apple tart, yum. Uh, my favorite animals are guppies, which are fish. When I grow up, I'm going to be a When I grow up, I'm going to be happy. I'm so old and ugly and stupid and boring, but I have nice teeth. And um, I've got a good sense of humor. I'm not mean. I reapply deodorant several times daily. No one could say I've let myself go. I take the stairs at work, sometimes. I'm an Aries. I'm an optimist. I don't hold any extreme beliefs like white supremacy or socialism. I'll find it interesting, whatever you're saying. You don't have to hold hands with me in public. I can see less of my friends that annoy you. I won't leave long rambling telephone messages. I won't feel the need to compete with your success. I can change my clothes. I could try a hat. I could work out. I'll shave my pubic hair. I won't judge you for your weird fetishes. I'll give you space when I begin to annoy you. I know what I am. I know my limitations. I just want someone. I just want someone. I just want someone, please, someone to... Imagine a boy, an Aboriginal boy. He's standing on the rocks above the Illawarra River. Just at that very moment, three ships from England come sailing up the long grey waters of the cove. Huge white sails. These are craft unlike he's ever seen, spacecraft almost. And on these ships are convicts, a condition of personhood the boy does not know. On these ships are officers and ratings, conditions of personhood the boy does not know. Carried on these ships are class and religion and disease and a multitude of under instruments of objectification and violence, all of which are about to be unleashed upon this people. But the boy doesn't know this yet. He doesn't know any of this yet. The only thing he knows are his land, his tribe, and the tribes beside. And now these sails. If you could go back in time and speak to that boy, what would you say? You would stand on the rocks and you would point at the ships and you would say, kill them, kill them all. Now, Nairi, I'm going to do the orange sauce, not the butter, so I'm going to need more oranges. I mean, it wouldn't be a Christmas without an orange glazed turkey, would it? Oh, shall we have champagne? No, we have to get through the order. 
Are you still doing that bit about the French? Oh, maybe, but we, then we need to get straight onto the turkey. Right, and then we go straight into the cold cheese soup. Yes. And it's just the cold cheese soup in that section? Yes, well, you're making the soup while I'm blending the cheeses. Peter? Yes? Will you be blending the cheeses quietly? Oh, David, would you shut up? All right, all right, Pete's blending his cheeses. <sighs> Once we have the sides prepared, then we get onto the cream castle. Oh, and I'll make sure to keep the cream in the fridge for as long as possible to avoid a meltdown. Yes. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? We're avoiding a meltdown. All right, good. Well, do I look all right? Yes, Peter. Yeah. Look, good luck. Yes, you too. Hello. It's good to have you with us again. And tonight is a very special evening yes. because it's Christmas and we're coming to you live for the very first time. 